Hello viewers, subscribers and fellow RC pilots, Stuart here at Stuart Warren RC for a sunny update on this Sunday afternoon on the Magnatilla. This is a restoration product, uh, project and this is going to be part two. If you remember it was my birthday project, uh, birthday present rather, and this is its current state. Um, just to give you a brief introduction, the firewall has been cleaned up a bit. I will now um, put some supports behind this opening and fill that opening and then mount a traditional engine mount on the front there, uh, which would need a slightly longer cow, which I will order too. This will be removed and uh, uh, Micri's flat metal put on top. The covering needs to be removed because of this shoddy pushrod system. So I need to get in at that. But you will remember that I did try to run this thing and um, the prop, it threw a prop because the uh, propeller was uh, quite worn down so the grip wasn't very good on the uh, on the prop bus. So I've now got that engine outside and to kick this off, uh, this part two off, I am going to see if I can get the engine running. Okay, so here we go, OS52 uh, that came off of that Magnatilla. Now, if you can recall, there was, first of all, part of the a cylinder head damage there. I think you can probably make out there. Uh, and actually a uh, cylinder head bolt is missing. Now I'm gonna see, it shouldn't cause many problems with running, but I obviously prefer to run an engine with all the bolts included. So first of all, I'm gonna see if I can get it running and then see about getting that, uh, that uh, threaded bolt out. It's actually snapped off just down there in the housing. So I'll probably drill with a 0.7 uh, millimeter drill bit in the center of the remaining bolt and then try and uh, push a screwdriver in there and pull it out as much as possible. Also on the rocker cover one of the bolts is missing um, from the front. It still shouldn't uh, change operation. Now I did try and run this earlier in the week uh, but I had old fuel, I've now got new fuel and I've also put an OS F plug um, in it so it should work really really well. This is on a um, 11 by 5.5. The other thing I wanted to point out to you guys, just in case you're wondering, this engine stand that you see here, I got this from eBay, and uh, it's a guy that makes it in the UK, I really, really like it. It comes with a select tank, it comes with this um, uh, bolt-on vice type grip uh, engine mount, which is adjustable, that moves up and down really, really nice, so you can fit a whole multitude of engine sizes in there, and it comes with this bracket for the fuel tank. Not only that, it comes with all the accessories, it comes with the push rod, it comes with the rubber bands, it comes with all the screws, and I think it was like uh, 30 euros or so. so, so 25 pounds. So it's a really, really, really good setup and I really, really like this. Anyway, enough of that. Um, oh, what I will say, if you want more information on this uh, engine uh, test stand setup kit, I will provide a link underneath the video. Anyway, I'm gonna put the camera down and let's see if we can get this thing right. So it runs and uh, actually like most four strokes when you get it a bit wet um, and a little flooded it starts really quite well. What I did see straight away, uh, yeah definitely from here where that bolt was missing there was some uh, fuel uh, or oil and I think fuel coming out of here, here so that's obviously not as tight as it's designed to be. Um, other than that seemed pretty good. The, uh, the sh response was a little low, uh, a little slow in responding on the throttle, but that can be adjusted for. And uh, I'll add that head. So if I if I can get out that missing missing screw or get out that broken the thread and then put in the new screw, it could well be that I will be able to use this engine. Uh, otherwise, it still works, but I just don't like the idea of using an engine with some bolts missing. So then it'll be kept for parts or sold on for parts. Anyway, on to the next part of the Magnetilla restoration. OK, 
Okay, so update on the Magnetilla. We saw I was playing with the engine before. This is now the engine. Well, it's in bits. And that is because that, if you can see there, that is the shoddy job someone did of trying to drill out this engine, that broken bolt. It's well mangled in there. There's no way that's coming out. So I'm now looking for a new crankcase. If anybody has one for a 52, please let me know. The rest of the engine is currently in this jam jar, awaiting a new replacement. Um, now I've moved on to the firewall. I have the engine mount now that I want, so I filled in the previous hole with the same six millimeter thick um, plywood here. And then what I'm gonna do is actually bolt on or screw on, this is six mil birch ply again, which is the same as the original firewall, uh, onto there. That will give my motor mount something nice to b uh, bite into there and you'll see anyway as I progress but basically with the new f uh, firewall facing added there and this gap filled in the engine will mount all forward at the firewall like so and that will be that so I'm going to continue sanding this with my trusty uh, permagrit sanding block if you don't have one of these definitely get one they're excellent and then that will be fuel proofed and made all nice I've got the flight metal coming from Micri's and not use that that'll be cool but once the firewall's done and I've drilled the holes and whatnot, then I'll recover, then I'll do the flight metal, then the engine will go on once it's repaired. So, all right, progress, but not great progress. Let's keep going and see where it takes us. Okay, progress. We said progress and let's see where it's taken us. And this is where it's taken us. What you see here is the, uh, the firewall. This is the dummy firewall that I mentioned that's been cut and drilled and ta-da! And you get a better view there. I've um, completely filled that in uh, with epoxy mixed with sawdust. That helps really well. Sanded that really, really flush. Put in the uh, claw nuts now uh, behind the, uh, the firewall, the infill firewall. And then this is that plate that I mentioned. And it aligns approximately like so. Onto which the end in engine mount goes for a 40 uh, to 50 size four stroke. That goes on there. What that means is at that point, everything uh, from in terms of the engine is forward of this firewall. Uh, so that means all the oil and all the excess fuel and everything will just drip out nicely down the bottom. Now, speaking of bottom, you can see this here. I'm going to fill this part here as well with some uh, right angle uh, tri um, right angle balsa, and then uh, face this with flight metal so it goes over the uh, the opening here or that um, filled in part there and the undercarriage because that will stop something that I really, really hate, which is a uh, fuel residue going under the undercarriage here and getting into the uh, wood block, which is, it's always gonna cause problems. So hopefully with that faced aluminum sheet, that will stop the uh, excess fuel from getting in there. Anyway, so now this will be bolted on and glued on. I'm gonna use self-tapping screws to bolt on the firewall as well as the bolts that go through to the underside for the motor mount and fuel proof it all and then replace all of this balsa skin here in fact that's the next job the next job is now that that is all sanded nice and flush the next job is removing this bottom sheeting and then also removing this terrible aluminium that he's got on there um, and fuel proofing inside here and actually I think probably the whole fuselage can be uncovered at that point so on with the show Okay, so I've now taken off the last of that uh, aluminium. It was basically just uh, plumber's aluminium tape and the problem is it's left it super, super tacky, uh, which I don't want because, it, okay, I'm gonna be putting um, aluminium over this again, better aluminium, but um, before that, I wanna go through and uh, sand it uh, and fill in these gaps and stuff like that. Now what I've found is that this stuff, um, it's Ultimate Sticker Remover. Now, you actually use this to remove um, decals and stickers from a model, but um, same principle. I just want to take off the sticky um, uh, 
backing or the sticky residue that's left after I've taken off the tape. So I have done several things. First of all, I experimented on this part that I'm going to remove. Now these black marks that you see here, I'll explain what that is in a second. So I sprayed it on first and then I used a knife to scrape off the residue and I'll give you an example of how it works I think on this one here. Now this I'm going to be removing anyway so it doesn't matter so much. Um, but if I put some on here, let that soak in for a second and then almost straight away hopefully what you'll see, maybe I can zoom in a bit there so you can see that a bit more um I'll just wipe that off so you can see with my blade and what that's doing is that that is all the glue see that that is all the sticky yucky glue now I need to get rid of that completely um because if I don't then I can't sand this and get it all looking nice so that's the next job to do that zoom out a bit more now uh, this I'm going to replace because it's a bit oil soaked underneath that will enable me to fuel proof further inside here uh, inside here um, so once that's off I'll fuel proof inside here then I'll sheet it and then what I can also do once I've got the stickiness off here is uh, fill that in and get that looking nice and smooth and there's one or two repairs that are needed here and there as you can see so that's the next task. Now you would have seen me uh, putting a lighter on and uh, burning the wood. Now don't worry because of course this part is all going to be covered in aluminium again so a little bit of burn mark on the wood won't matter. All I'm doing is burning off the residue from um, the excess, the leftover glue, and also the residue from this, because this is highly flammable. And what that does, it brings all those oils out to the wood, and that's pretty much uh, good to go, uh, good to be sanded anyway. Still feels a little bit tacky, and I'll just keep spraying with this, and then keep scraping with the knife until I get it to the point where it's usable wood again. There we go. Okay, so um, you've seen from that little bit of uh, time lapse there that I've been working on the fuselage and what you'll also notice is that there's now no towel plane. I had intended to originally just strip back the fuselage only up to the uh, fl uh, flying surfaces and the towel plane, but then I saw that um, actually here there was some weak spots that meant that there was some either dry glue joints in here or uh, something had broken. So I really, as much as it's extra work, I really wanted to get in and have a look at that. Also, he's, he's done a you know a reasonable job with the hinging, um, but there's some like epoxy here, and they're the type of hinges that I don't like. I, I like to use um, pin hinged uh, pin hinges. So I've taken the whole tailplane off. That will make uh, recovering the fuselage that much easier, and also it will make sorting out the. Uh, new push rods I want to put in and pull pull system for the rudder easier and now I've got the fuselage off I can see things like this that uh, can be fixed very very easily so this will now be um, recovered as well I think although I've got to think about how maybe maybe the actual tail plane will stay covered and then I just do the surfaces again with the hinge I don't know but anyway it's off now and um, next stage is to figure that out and then also mount the uh, the false firewall, the new false firewall. Give this a bit of uh, sand in the field. I've removed all the stickiness now. As you can see, look, that is completely dry and not tacky at all. Uh, these marks here are just where I try to burn off some of the excess uh, leftover residue. Um, works very well, but if you're not careful, it will leave some marks. However, that is going to be covered in aluminium up until about this point, so that's fine. Um, this will be fuel proofed in here, um, then once that's fuel proofed internally I'll sheet that and um, glue that bottom on again and then start thinking about recovering. 
Okay, so we're going to wrap up this episode with a final look over where I'm at right now. Fuselage has been recovered. I've got a pull pull system uh, ready uh, to go in here for the rudder, rearrange the servos and reinforce the servo rails there. And also I've got a new push rod system for the, um, for the elevator that's much, much stiffer. Speaking of elevator and tail, uh, here is the uh, horizontal and vertical stab. I actually you can probably just make it out there if I can just pick this up. See that darker piece of wood in there? I actually added a longer on there just to stiffen that up of spruce wood. That's now much, much stiffer. And these have all been rehinged with the pin hinges that I like. So the tail is almost ready to go on. Oh, speaking of tail, I don't know if you can see, I just fashioned a, a much better looking tail skid there. A little bit more authentic. Um, so with this all done, there really it's a case of getting this pickle jar of engines into a full running engine. So when I say, I'll say it again, when I say if anybody has an OS52 that they're willing to sell or a ASP52 or an Enya 53, something around the uh, early 50 size uh, four strokes, please let me know because I'm very interested because I can't use this. Well, I could, but I'm a bit you know, picky when it comes to leaking engines. And that's the whole reason I moved this engine forward is because uh, I don't like uh, all the residue and all the oil that comes with nitro. That's the one thing I don't like about it. Everything else is beautiful, but all the gunk and goo, don't like it. So I want to keep that away from the model as much as possible. So the next thing to do is uh, get an engine, get that on, and that's really what's holding this up. Once that's done, the wing is already done. I've got the aluminium. This is the um, uh, flight metal from McRees, I think it's called, and it's uh, fuel proof and it's uh, much better looking genuine aluminium. So what you'll see when the cowl is on is that those two are very nicely matched, especially once I polish the cowl up a bit. However, I will need to get a slightly longer cowl to accommodate the uh, the uh, the further standing of the engine, but I, I can order that from the UK. So, as to the next update, I'm not sure what you'll see next. Well, I've got an idea of what you'll see next, but I don't know when it's gonna be, is what I mean uh, meant to say. Maybe I'll get this finished by the end of the year. Who knows, it's very much on my own family timetable. We'll see how things go. You guys know how it is. So that's it for this update. Thank you for watching. And if you like, please like. If you want to comment, please do. Positive and negative are always welcome. And I will see you for the next one. Bye-bye.